Go for it. Good. So this is Eddie's Very Long Week, and it's by Chiara Tonini. How'd you like that? That was good, wasn't it? I'm not going to be able to read this, am I? It's going to be too small. Um, title card, Monday. Interior bedroom, early morning. The hands of an old-fashioned alarm clock tick to 6 a.m., and the thing rings loudly. Almost immediately, a finger descends on the stop button, neat and precise, purposely cutting off the sound, the sound off. Our man, Eddie, 30s, rises out of a neat, fluffy duvet. We are in an immaculate bedroom, decorated with flair and panache, masculine and unapologetically stylish. Eddie himself slides out of bed and on into slippers. He's wearing silk pajamas, a truly impressive moustache and haircut and hairnet. He stretches. Unlike most of us at 6 a.m., he's wide awake and ready to embrace the new day. Interior, Eddie's house, early morning. We are treated to Eddie's crisp morning routine. Quick cuts of serene yoga pose, a healthy breakfast, a meticulous pampering of his hair, moustache into grooming perfection, a, uh, a careful select selection and donning of today's outfit and a three-piece suit with a retro look that is oh so trendy. Exterior shop front morning, Eddie comes out of the door at street level, locking behind him. He lives above a flamboyant barber shop, the front sporting a proper old school barber pole. In fact, Eddie walks three steps and stops in front of the shop's entrance. He unlocks the door, picks up today's paper lying on the step and enters. Now we see the sign, it reads Eddie's Barber Shop. Interior barber shop morning, the shop very much reflects Eddie's personality. Spotless, Immaculate and retro, Eddie wearing a black apron is lovingly aligning combs by size order in front of one of the mirrors. We hear a motorcycle rumble and stop outside. After, mo after a moment, the door opens and the brass doorbell chimes. Eddie smiles, looking up. Vincenzo, late 20s, struts in, helmet in hand, strapping in a leather, strapping in a leather jacket, his black curly hair charmingly tousled. Morning, Bosch. Montage, Vincenzo grabs a black apron and joins in prepping the shop for the day. That is, Vincenzo tries his best, not flawlessly, but enthusiastically. Eddie quietly fixes any small imperfections in his wake with benign solicitude. The clock high on the walls ticks on. It's a slow morning. Eddie and Vincenzo are fretting and obsessing over the state of the shop, fixing invisible blemishes. Stop montage, a white barber's cape is flung around a guy's neck as he drops in one of the chairs. Lots of hair, clearly in need of a major upgrade. Eddie is behind him, shiny tools at the ready, eagerly awaiting instructions. instructions. Vincenzo hangs off Eddie's every gesture. Just a frame change. Eddie's smile fades, Vincenzo hangs his head in disappointment. Montage resumed, Eddie and Vincenzo goof around playing football with a scrunched up paper. Eddie makes microscopical adjustments to a bunch of large white daisies near the mirrors with loving care. Vincenzo counts boxes in a small storage room in the back. Eddie replaces the stick deodorant on the windowsill in the tiny bathroom and smells the air obsessively. There's this damn ceramic tile behind the toilet that has been loose for ages and drives Eddie nuts. Even if nobody else can spot it, he pushes it back in its place. The arms of the clock high on the wall crawl on. End montage. The doorbell chimes, customer, Eddie and Vincenzo turn around electrified with huge smiles on their face. A little old lady squints at them and then at the shop. Sorry, wrong door. Eddie and Vincenzo's smiles dissolve. Interior barbershop early afternoon, the doorbell chimes and Max Kowalski, 40s, the local mechanic barges in carrying a tray of pastries. Good afternoon, boys. Vincenzo dives on the tray, sighs with bliss at the smell. How's the back today, Max? Eddie bends on the tray, sifting through. He's a picky eater. Max drops into a chair and takes a pastry. Killing me, my man. I'm not. But the doorbell chimes again, interrupting him. The Kelly brothers, Owen and Patrick, swagger inside. The brothers look alike, overweight, pinstripe suited, bejeweled. Cartoonish mafia bosses, but not very funny. The temperature in the room drops a few degrees. Vincenzo and Max stop talking at once and look at their own shoes. Patrick starts wandering around the shop as Owen walks up to Eddie, who's frozen in place. Eddie, my boy, do you know what day it is today? The second, but 
the second. Pause. Patrick checks out the tray of pastries and picks one, uninvited, as Vincenzo and Max smile timidly. It's It's been slow. I haven't... I think you are keeping something from me. No, no, there, there hasn't been much custom. Hey, please don't... Eddie is distracted by Patrick, who is cramming the pastry in his mouth, spreading crumbs and sugar everywhere. Worse, Patrick starts picking up Eddie's perfectly aligned combs with his dirty hands and puts them down carelessly. Eddie cringes. Owen enjoys his discomfort. You should take better care of business, Eddie. But that's not my problem. My problem is that Patrick doesn't like waiting. Patrick picks up one of Eddie's precious razors. But please be careful. They are delicate. Patrick drops it on the floor. Eddie groans. Please. Business is slow. Then you are a shitty barber. Isn't he, Patrick? Patrick cleans his hand on Vincenzo's apron. I would not bring my dog in here for grooming. Eddie is stung and humiliated. Vincenzo looks stricken. You have three days to give me what's mine. Owen pats Eddie on the cheek, smirking. Then the Kellys prance out without another word. Vincenzo and Max throw Eddie commiserating looks. Eddie shakes his head mutely. He does not want to talk about it. He fixes his moustache where Owen messed it up and lovingly picks up his fallen razor. Interior barbershop, a minute to 5pm. The clock on the wall shows it's one minute to 5pm. Max is in a chair under a cape, chatting animatedly as Vincenzo is applying dark hair colour on him with a brush, a frown of concentration on his face. Eddie is leaning on the counter, arms crossed, listening idly, his early energy and good mood somewhat faded. And like I said yesterday, this guy's not even loaded. He just throws his money around. You know what I mean? Never liked him. His cousin is nice, though. Eddie and Max chuckle, exchanging knowing glasses in the mirror. And she totally thinks you're nice, too, my boy. Ooh, baby. Vincenzo smiles sheepishly and accidentally drops the brush on Max's forehead, leaving a big and semi-permanent black smear. They both exclaim loudly. Oh, sorry, sorry. Vincenzo, Eddie. my boy. Eddie leaps into action, but he hasn't made two steps when the doorbell chimes and the door slams open, freezing him in place to look at the newcomer. A tall, strange woman is standing in the doorway. She calls herself Darko. She wears a long brown leather overcoat, battered and singed in places on combat boots. She carries a leather shoulder bag. The back of her left hand is inked with a black tribal tattoo. She probably is in her early 20s, but it's hard to tell because her face is caked with dried blood and covered in cuts and bruises. Her hair is a tangled mess. Everyone is stunned, but Eddie remembers his manners. Welcome to Eddie's. How can we help you, madam? She looks at him for a very long moment. Eddie starts to fidget. I would like a haircut, please. Interior, barber's shop moments later. The white barber's cape is flung around Darko's neck as she drops into the chair next to Max with a wince. Vincenzo and Max are frozen in stupor, Max with a big black streak of hair colour across his forehead. Darko contemplates a bunch of white daisies near the mirror. Something seems to stir in her just for a moment. Eddie is standing behind her with tools at the ready and he's all business, his manic energy resurfacing. Do you have something specific in mind, madam? I like it more presentable. You know, classy. Eddie nods politely and gestures silently at Vincenzo, who snaps out of his wonder. Uh, would you like a, a cup of tea or coffee, madam? Darko shakes her head and instead takes a hip flask out of her pocket. She sips and grimaces up the liquor, stings her cut lips. Eddie picks up a pair of scissors and Darko's hand whip-like shoots up and grabs his wrist in a vice-like grip. Eddie freezes and Max lets out a whimper of shock. Darko and Eddie lock eyes in the mirror. A very long couple of seconds pass between them. I apologise. And she releases Eddie's arm. After a beat, Vincenzo peers his gaze off her to concentrate on Max again. He starts rubbing Max's forehead vigorously with a cloth while Max fusses in protest. Interior barbershop. Sometime later, Eddie adds his microscopic finishing touches to Darko's new flawless haircut. Clearly satisfied with his own work, he's in his element. Behind him, Vincenzo is mimicking his gestures on an imaginary head, frowning in concentration. 
Eddie now moves to face Darko and tentatively points to a leather pouch sitting on the table. In it sits a straight razor. Just the finishing touches in the back. Darko sizes him up and seems to decide in his favour. She nods to him, laying back in her chair. Eddie ever so carefully lifts the razor to the back of her neck. Vincenzo holds his breath. The stakes seem high, but Eddie is a master barber, and before you know it, he's finished. Not a drop of blood, except, of course, for the blood which was already there. Vincenzo passes him a steaming towel. We need to keep clean your face now, madam. I don't have antiseptic, unfortunately. But this should be better than nothing. Let me... Darko nods with a grunt and grabs the towel from him to mop her face up. Eddie and Vincenzo and Max wince at her vigorous rubbing. Darko looks at herself in the mirror and seems satisfied. She examines her cuts and bruises, now more in evidence than ever. Kit, Q. Eddie inspects his own work with professional appraisal. It's really a very nice haircut, shame for all the blood. Darko looks like another woman altogether. Vincenzo has also noticed because he perks up and leans in from behind Eddie for a closer look. Eddie elbows him in the gut surreptitiously. You're welcome. It suits you very much, madam. Very much. Then Eddie picks up a small bottle of makeup foundation. How do we feel about makeup? Interior baker sh barber shop moments later. The old school cashier drawer, cashier drawer clanks closed as the door of the shop snaps shut. For a moment, there is complete silence and Vincenzo and Max explode in excitement. What the hell was that? Did you see her? Did you see her face? What a strange lady. Interior barbershop evening. Quick cuts of Eddie lining up tools in the steriliser. Vincenzo mopping the floor. Vincenzo pushing a pile of towels, some of them bloody, into a washing machine. Exterior, outside, front, shop front, evening. Eddie locks the door, then pauses to look at Vincenzo. Good work today. Vincenzo smiles from ear to ear, then takes a breath. <laughs> I, I think I'm ready, boss. To cut, I mean. Hair, haircuts, I mean. We'll see. Vincenzo dons his helmet and jumps on his motorcycle and thunders away. Eddie walks a few steps to his own front door. Title card, Tuesday. Interior bedroom, early morning. We see the same alarm clock we've seen before. It's 6 a.m. again and it goes off. After a moment, Eddie's finger descends on the stop button, neat and precise. Eddie rises from his bed, hairnet and all, with his customary morning person energy. He stretches. Interior Eddie's house, early morning, quick cuts of, and we're off again to his morning routine, breakfast, yoga, hair and moustache, outfit retro, obviously. Exterior shop front, early morning. Eddie comes out of his front door and walks a few steps to the shop, picks up today's paper, opens up and enters. Interior barber shop morning, Eddie is prepping for the shop, aligning magazines on the bench and today's copy of the Daily Reporter. We hear the motorcycle engine outside and Eddie smiles without looking up. The doorbell chimes and in walks Vincenzo. Buongiorno, boss. He's carrying a fresh bunch of white daisies. Montage, it's not just another day at Eddie's. Eddie cuts hair and fixes beard. Vincenzo washes heads and sweeps the floor. Eddie lovingly arranges the fresh daisies in a new vase. Max drops in with coffees and sandwiches. His forehead is raw from scrubbing, but the little back stripe of hair colour is still visible. Mostly they hang around. There is not much work. The arms of the clock on the wall crawl on. Interior barber shop lunchtime. A grey-haired gentleman, 60s, in an impeccable three-piece suit comes in. One of those older men who seem ageless and eternally youthful. This is Sorkin. We'll meet him later. Sorkin and Eddie sees once. Sighs, I think that means. Sighs one, other, one another up and finds spiritual connection in their sense of fashion. On order, shave and sideburn trim. And Eddie hands the tools to Vincenzo, who needs a minute to compose himself for the unexpected honour. Vincenzo goes to work on Sorkin under Eddie's watchful but discreet supervision. Interior barber shop, one minute to 5 p.m. The clock on the wall ticks to one minute to five. At that precise moment, the doorbell chimes and the door swings open. Eddie and Vincenzo look up with big smiles, but Vincenzo's jaw drops. While Eddie's smile falters, only ironclad politeness keeps it in place. Darko is standing in the doorway, leather coat, bag, tattoo and all. Her face is thunderous. There are no cuts and bruises on it, but there's a new big bloody gash on her forehead. Her hair is long again, tangled, messy, impossibly long. 
a distended pregnant beat. Then Eddie's reptilian brain steps up. Well, welcome to Eddie's. How can we help you, madam? I would like a haircut, please. Eddie automatically gestures to a chair and Darko slowly walks over and sits in it with a sigh. Vincenzo is gaping at her but closes his mouth quickly when Darko glances up at him in the mirror. So there we are. Thank you. That's the end of the 10 pages. Um, Aaron, what are your thoughts about that? Well, technical stuff aside, which I'm sure you're going to talk about, it, I liked it a lot. I know it's a lot of um, action, but there's some sort of sensory thing happening with, I can, I can see it all in my head. And sometimes I like those movies where there's like less talking and more, because it's saying so much with all the stuff that he does. I don't know. I liked it. I liked it a lot. I liked that I could see it. I liked that it felt like I could hear it almost like the different things that were happening. Um, I think some of the characters, maybe a little more development on them, like the smaller characters, like the friends, but I like it. I want to see what happens next. It's really interesting. Oh, thank you. John. Uh, once again, you know, the technical stuff, I no doubt you will pull. Checking as it is your remit. Am I on mute, am I? No, I'm not. No, carry on. Uh, I never tell whether I'm on mute or not. Like Erin, I absolutely loved it. Within 10 pages, I could visualise Eddie, I could visualise Vincenzo, and I could definitely visualise you know, the lady. Really, really did enjoy it and definitely want to know what happens next. And I've got a feeling that this uh, Sorkin is going to be very much a large contributing fact. I just feel it, you know. That's cool. Thank you. Rachel? Yeah, um, really intriguing ending. Definitely want to know what happens next. I liked the start as well. I don't know. I feel like I've seen a lot of films where you have a bad morning routine or someone that's not looking forward to their day. And it's quite nice to have this sort of, this character that seems to have it figured out. And then we learn that business maybe isn't going so well for him. Um, yeah, other than, other than a few technical things and giving yourself a really good proofread, maybe giving it someone else to have a proofread. Um, I did enjoy it and I'm very intrigued by it. Brilliant, thank you. Just wait for the train to go by. Um, yeah, I'll, shall I do the technical stuff? Technically, um, yeah, your your series of your montage and your there was another one and I can't remember what you called it. Quick cuts. They need that need to be a series of shots or a montage. Your montage. Oh, it's so complicated explaining the difference between a series of shots and a montage because they appear to be the same. They're not. Um, one is one is done in the edit, and the other one is shot by the second unit. And um, without, I, it's too late for me to get my head round which is which. So I'm going to say it's a series of shots, and uh, they need to be prefaced. Each shot needs to be an A, a B, a C, a D. They just need to be listed like that. It's just a way that it's done in scripts. Um, other than that, I thought there were places where you kind of overwritten. Um, um, so that it was more like a novel than a script. Um, some of the asides weren't weren't really necessary, but they did they did give a flavour. You know, they did set the scene. So I think it's a it's a delicate balancing act. You know, between um, writing enough and writing too much. Um, I liked the characters. I thought they were really well defined. Um, we mentioned it before we record started recording. Even if you're, you've got a character that doesn't say very much, please name them. Um, little old lady, and there was another one, wasn't there? Yeah, guy in the chair. Guy in the chair. Just call them Joe and Frida or Mary and, I don't know, George or something. Um, um, yeah. It also helps with the end credits. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> um, and especially you've got a lot of extras, then you have a lot of little old ladies, wouldn't you? Exactly. <laughs> sure. 
And also if they, I mean, there's a difference, isn't there, between um, uh, characters that have a line and characters that don't have a line. Yes. You know? um, so, so and There's yeah. definitely a pay difference as well. There's definitely a difference in pay, exactly. So that's just, it's a minor thing, really. Um, yeah, other than that, I liked the way that it it went. I'm just looking at my notes. Uh, I thought that the morning set up and then the repeat was a bit Truman Show-ish. Um, you know, it's like, come up, hi, good morning, hello. You, you, not in the same way, but it was that kind of, I quite liked it though. Um, I, did, I did like it. Yeah, it'd be interesting to know where it was going and what was happening with it and why. You know, clearly by the time we've got to her returning with long hair again, there's something a little bit woo about this. And it would be nice to know what that was. So, yeah, good, great start. Thanks. I was just picturing Celine from Underworld. <laughs> I mean, nothing to do with it. I was just picturing it. 